The Lord will welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that the God Almighty, whom we serve, we bless us through his word as we listen to his word today in the name of Jesus. Today we're talking about the authority of an ambassador for Christ. As an ambassador for Christ, what type of authority should you have and what amount of authority should you have as an ambassador that is representing God's kingdom? Let us pray. Our Father and King, thank you for this new month. We appreciate you for the blessings of the past month. And we also thank you for the blessing of this new month, even the things you have in store for us. Receive glory and praise and honor forever, Lord. Thank you because we know day by day you are growing us. You are taking us from one level to another height. We appreciate you, Bishop of our souls. Even now, O Lord God, we ask that you speak through me to us today so that we will hear your word and grow in the knowledge and in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to understand the authority you've bestowed upon us. Help us to understand the glory you have stored for us, the exalted position we have in Christ Jesus. If we don't have this understanding, we will not be able to function effectively. We will not be able to guard jealously that which you have purchased for us. Therefore, Lord, we ask that you open the eyes of our hearts. Give us true understanding. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus and we come against every work of darkness. May your word be fruitful in our lives, even unto eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're talking about the authority of an ambassador for Christ. As of Apostles chapter 1, verse 8, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in all Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. In today's message, let me just tell you, I will be using the word power and authority interchangeably, but I prefer the word authority. And also, when you give someone authority, the authority you give to someone in a kingdom defines their duty, their responsibilities. So some of the authorities, types of authorities and how they are used, I'll be talking about is going to also be in line with the responsibilities that those who wield the authority are supposed to carry out. So Jesus Christ in As of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8 says that the disciples will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon them and they will be witnesses unto him in all Judea and in all Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Then in As of Apostles chapter 2, 1 to 4, the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles. Let me read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see here that the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost, and they were empowered, they received authority. Let me tell you something, what happened on the day of Pentecost wasn't just the release and the receiving of the Holy Ghost, 
it was also the day the kingdom of God came down with power and the beginning of the church was instituted. It is the very day that the church was born. And the church is the kingdom of God. The church is not a religion. So for the church to be able to stay and function on earth, there has to be some level of power, some authority released upon those who are going to champion the affairs of this kingdom. That is why the apostles received the Holy Ghost. Apart from that too, there can never be a kingdom without authority. Every kingdom has a king. And that king exercises his dominion over a domain. It is a kingdom means the domain of a king. It is a domain that a king oversees, a king reigns over. That is what a kingdom means. So we as believers, we should understand that we have a king. The king of this kingdom is Jesus Christ. And this king is out of this world right now. Living with us, the Holy Spirit is sent the Holy Spirit to us. The king of this kingdom is in heaven. And we are here on earth to represent him with the Holy Spirit being here with us. To empower us and to lead us and to guide us into our truth. Jesus Christ is no longer here on earth with us, but we are empowered to carry out the work of the ministry. There are different types of authorities. There are different types. And in this message, we are going to limit ourselves to some of them. And they are tied to the activities, the responsibilities that we are given to carry out in this kingdom. Each of the types of authorities is tied to responsibilities. Everybody does not receive the same, but for every child of God, there is an amount of authority, power you receive from Jesus Christ. Let us journey back to Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. When God was to create the earth, he proposed the plan of who man will be. The plan is, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, and let that man we are going to create have dominion over the seas, over the lands, over every creepy thing, and over the whole earth. Man is to have dominion, the man God planned to create was to have dominion and after he created man in genesis chapter 2 he handed over everything to man before he did the final handing over one of the things he did was to bring everything that he created all the animals he brought everything he created to man so that man can name all of them he presented them to man for man to also name them and the bible says whatsoever name Man called them, that was the name they are called. So from that moment, man was endowed with authority. Man as a representative of God on earth had authority over everything. The lion wasn't feasting on man. The crocodiles, the bees, the venomous snakes they were not attacking man because man was covered with the glory of god but in genesis chapter 3 after the fall of man man lost that glory and man was driven out of the garden of eden we have to understand these things we were created with authority when god created us but when jesus christ came after the fall of man he restored this back to us he went to hell. He took the key from the devil. And he said, all authority in heaven and on earth had been given to me. As a father has sent me, so I am sending you as my ambassadors in this world to carry out the 
assignments of this kingdom, the greatest of which is the work of winning souls. Today we're going to talk about, we just look at briefly each of these ones, different kinds of authorities, positional authority, authority over nature. These are just few types of kinds of authorities that I just for the sake of this learning, I just listed them out so that I can break it down so that we can have a clear understanding of this message. The authority of an ambassador for Christ, an ambassador for this kingdom, positional authority, authority over nature, authority to cast out demons, authority to win souls, authority to heal all manner of diseases, authority to raise the dead, authority to set the captives free, authority to partake in God's government. Next week, by the grace of God, we're going to look at Christians in God's government. In what way do we partake, do we participate in the government of God, in the administration of God? Remember what God said? That I look for a man that is a lament. He lamented. It's a lamentation. I looked for a man. I searched for a man, but I could not see any. God is always looking for a man who will be a part of his government to help him execute the affairs of the kingdom. When heaven has made release a decree, when heaven makes any plan concerning this earth, God needs men to execute these plans. And when he finds none, he becomes restricted because from the beginning, man is the king of this domain. He was crowned as the one who exercises dominion over earth. That is why even for Jesus Christ to come to this world to save mankind, he had to become man first because the earth is handed over to man. And if you are not a man, you will be accused by the accuser of the brethren. And God also will be going against his word to come to this earth and begin to do the very things that he had handed over to man to do. God respects his word. That is why God said that the seed of the woman is going to come to crush your head. It was it impossible for God to come himself to crush the head of the serpent, but if he comes himself as God to crush his head on earth, he would be going against his own word. So he had to come as the son of man. That is one of the reasons Jesus Christ loved this title so much, the son of man, the son of man, the son of man. He loved the title to tell everyone that, hey, I'm not here as God. I'm here as man. I'm not violating my own word. We Christians must understand these things. These things are very, very, very important. So let's look at some of these um, authorities. And as we look at them, we'll also be looking at the responsibilities because they are tied together. Let's look at this one, positional authority, Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Every position you are given, there is an authority that is attached. Your pastor, no matter how spiritual you are, your pastor has some level of authority over you because he is the one that is pastoring you. That is why it will be judged. Leaders, teachers will be judged with more strictness because they are given positional authority and they are high ranking members of this kingdom when it comes to leadership. So when they don't do their works, they are held accountable for negligence of duty. So, the position you are given, any position you are given has 
some level of authority that you are and you are endued with to exercise. But as a believer, anytime you once you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are a believer, there is an amount of power you have, one of which is the power to become the sons of God. For as many as believe in his name, those who believe in him, those who accept him and believe in him, he gave power to become the sons of God. So to be a child of God is a privilege. You are endued with some level of power to become the son of God, the child of God, a child of the kingdom. Because you are born of the spirit and there is a transformation that takes place. You need power to be transformed. There is the power that is needed to be transformed. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that transforms you. He gave power to become the sons of God. Then also, authority over nation. Let's look at what Jesus Christ said. Remember, we're talking about the authority of an ambassador for Christ. As an ambassador for the kingdom, what authority do you have? I'm not talking about how to exercise it, but we should know what we have. If a child does not know that he's a heir of the kingdom, he, a slave is better than that child. A servant is better than that child. So we have to know, understand very deeply our position in this kingdom so that we will not use ignorance to throw away the very things that we are supposed to enjoy. Now let's look at authority over nature. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 following. Verse 26. And God said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make men in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fire of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. This is the authority, is the dominion that God gave to man. This is not the authority to perform signs and wonders. No, that one is supernatural power, which Jesus gave to his disciples. He said, if you believe, you can tell this mountain, if you don't doubt, pick up yourself and throw yourself in the sea and it will obey you. On earth, we are given authority at creation. When God created man, he handed over this earth to man to take care of this earth. I've done some explanation before. So let's move to the next one, authority to cast out devils. Authority to cast out demons. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is the authority that Jesus Christ gave to us Christians to cast out devils. We are endued with power. We are not to house demons. We are not to house these devils, but we are given the authority to cast them out. That is the authority that Jesus Christ has given to you as a believer. Make use of it. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 17 verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you will have faith as a grain of mustard seed, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. You shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you believe, nothing will be impossible. You will command physical things. You will command spiritual things. You will 
change nation, you will alter nation. Remember, Jesus Christ says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Unfortunately, the things that are supposed to follow us are the things that many of us are pursuing. These things are to follow us. We know these signs are actually some of the things that are supposed to tell people that the ministry this man of God is running is genuine. That the gospel this child of God is preaching is a real gospel. So that people will believe. We are not to pursue these things and idolize them. If you go out to preach and no miracle happens, that shouldn't stop you from preaching. There are some things that God does in his own time. If your faith is not to that level to make signs and wonders follow you, don't stop preaching. Continue to grow in the knowledge of the Lord and in the grace of the Lord. Today we see a lot of people pursuing miracles and because the devil knows that people want to see signs and wonders not caring about the fruit of the worker of these miracles. They don't care if he is a womanizer, he is a thief, he is a scammer, or he is a witch, a wizard, an idolater. They don't care. They don't care to look at the fruit the person is bearing. All they care about, I, I need it. I need a miracle now. I need a healing now. And because of this, Satan has empowered his children to go into the world, to come into the church, to deceive people. And he is making a lot of success because a lot of people don't want to listen to the truth. They are after they have coded, they are after they have baked message. They have the sugar coated gospel. That's what they are after. But we who know the truth, let us follow the hard truth and not give in to the lies of the devil. We will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. We will lay hands upon those who have demons and the demons will flee. If we believe, if we believe, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing of any kind shall be impossible. Only if we believe. Do you believe? There are times that some people will come to me and say, Ah, oh, pastor, pray for me. I need prayers. I need prayers. Sometimes I ask them, since when have you been sick? They tell me, have you prayed? They said, no. Oh, you've been sick, but you haven't prayed for yourself. Sometimes I tell them, no, I can't pray for you. You have to pray for yourself first. As a matter of fact, someone was telling me recently, she said, uh, you pray, we were to pray, and I said, okay, you pray first. And she said, you pray, uh, God will answer your prayer more than my own. And I said, okay, if you don't want to pray, then we will not pray. And we did not pray. Some of us have idolized men of God. We have so much idolized them to the point that we are even tempted to see them as the physical God. No, God hears the prayer of every believer. If you do not doubt in your heart, Jesus Christ said, when you pray, believe that you have received. Do you know that the men of God who want to always pray for you, do you know that they are not doing you good? They are robbing you of your spiritual growth. They don't want you to grow. If they really want you to grow, 
they will not allow you to be a baby all these years. We are not going out there to raise funds. We are raising disciples. We, we convert souls. We win souls. And after they are won, we teach them the word of God. We disciple them until they grow to maturity and they themselves become disciples. Those who will also disciple others. My younger brother, my half brother, he told me, one day he asked me, he said, how is it that um, sometimes witches will be oppressing me and then when I call you, you pray with me and they don't come. But sometimes after I pray, they even oppress me the more. Why? And he said, sometimes you'll be praying when I wake you up in the night and then you pray and just sleep off. You don't even conclude the prayers, but the prayers work. <laughs> I did not use that opportunity to tell him that I am a special person to the Lord. No, I'm not special. I'm a human being like you. I told him, you have to be in Christ. You have to give your life to Jesus Christ. Obey the scriptures. Live the life of the kingdom. We have authority in Christ. Don't cast it away. Don't live like a slave. Now that you have been reconciled back to God. Now that you are in Christ. Don't live in sin. You may fall into temptation, you may make mistakes, but that is not your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is a lifestyle of righteousness. The holiness is a life of the kingdom. There is a lifestyle you live, demons will see you and will not run away. But when you are living in Christ, you are walking in holiness, in righteousness. Demons will see you and flee. The garment of righteousness, if you have it on, when they see you, there is a writing, an inscription on your forehead. Don't touch. They flee. They cannot withstand the presence of of the fire of the Holy Ghost in you. Those who want you to be dependent year in, year out are not helping you. As a believer, you have to learn how to pray. You have to learn how to fast. You have to read the word of God for yourself. Start depending on people. But how many people want to work hard if you can get things easy? If your pastor can pray and fast for you, and all you just need to do is give him so some seed and continue to be faithful in your tithing, so what's the need to fast and pray? But that is what people like. That is not how this kingdom runs. This kingdom doesn't work like that. Stop being deceived. You have to have a personal relationship with Christ you have to be in him. You have to be in Christ. And you get the protection you're looking for in different uh, prayer houses. Let's come back to what we are talking about. Authority to cast out devils. Look at Matthew chapter 8, 10 verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Look at Matthew. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Even if someone is dead, Jesus Christ says, raise him up. Cast out the devils. And all this you must do free of charge. Don't charge anything. 
Don't monetize it. I know a lot of people don't read this. <laughs> if they read this, they will not monetize the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ has been monetized today. Then let's look at the other one. The authority to win souls. You have been endued with power. You have been given the assignment and you are also have the authority to go out there and win souls. Those who are lost, win them back to the kingdom. Win them. When you see those who are out there, they don't know the Lord, give them the word of God. Tell them the word of the kingdom. Win souls for the kingdom. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't preach, but thank God for those who preach. Every time I see some brothers and sisters who are very faithful in soul winning. May God bless you. Your reward is in heaven. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We, are, we have given this authority. If you go out to preach and someone asks you, who gave you the authority to come in? Let me tell you, there are territorial demons. There is no place under this heaven, there are no territorial demons claiming authority over that environment. Everywhere you go to under this heaven, there are demons, there are occult men who claim to be in charge of that environment. You remember the lunatic. Jesus asked him, how many are you? He asked the demons in him. And they said, we are legions. But you remember what they said? They had a request. They did not say, don't cast us out. They did not resist him. He said, okay, when you cast us out, cast us into those pigs. He said, don't cast us out of this environment. They were Territorial demons in that madman. There were also suicidal spirits in him. That is why when they entered into the, 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 the pigs, they couldn't survive it. They ran steeply into the water and they died. They died. Because there were suicidal demons among those spirits in that man. The man, because of the plan of God for him, he could survive them. He was able to host them for years. But the pigs couldn't survive them. Remember, the man was cutting himself with stones. And nobody could bound him. We are asked to go and set the captives free. Some of them, they have different kind of problems. It's not just about preaching. There are some people who have this hardened heart. It's not because they haven't heard the gospel of Jesus Christ any day, but because the demons in them are preventing them from hearing the gospel, from hearing the good news. The demons don't want them to hear the truth. That is why when you talk to them, they get angry. They get angry at the truth. They are very angry. They don't want to repent. They don't want to submit. When they hear repent, the demons in them stir them up. The demons in them stir up their anger. In fact, there are some of them, before you come close to them, they are already angry at you. There are some of you, you haven't actually experienced hatred because... You haven't submitted fully to Jesus Christ. If you have submitted fully to Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God in you, the anointing of God is upon your life. 
messing you. Some people will develop hatred for you because they see the glory of God in you. Seeing you, they, they don't see darkness. They see the light of Christ in you. And they are angry. And they hate you. It doesn't matter how good what you're saying is. It doesn't matter how good, how much you help them, they will still hate you. We are asked to go out and win souls for the kingdom. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every Christian. Go and preach. Win souls for the kingdom. Go and tell them about Jesus Christ. Go out there and tell them the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. As an ambassador for Christ, listen to this scripture. Listen, let's read it together. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. The same way God reconciled the world through Christ to himself. The same way he is reconciling the world to himself through us. And he has given us this authority to enter the kingdom of darkness and bring people out. We are his ambassadors. To bring people out from captivity, from chains, from darkness, and translate them into the kingdom of life. Let me tell you, we Christians, we cannot save souls because we don't have the power. We don't have the authority to save souls. It is only the power of God that can save souls. But without men, the power of God cannot save souls. How will they hear if nobody preaches to them? The Lord has sent us to go and win souls. So it is our responsibility to go out there and win souls. We have this authority. Every now and then we are challenged. I remember some years ago I was in the theological school. I think that was two, either to early 2010 or 2009 there was this woman who was seven idols so i went to visit my mother and then my mother was telling me about this woman that she wanted to repent but the demons are troubling her they are tormenting her and i said okay maybe after we finish our farm work it was a weekend it was a saturday so I went to help my mother with some farm work. There was this uh, piece of land. I needed to brush it and clear it. The land was really bushy. There were trees. I need to cut them down. So as I made up my mind and was sleeping, I saw this heaviness came upon me. It was so heavy. I was partially conscious. I could see the leaves of the trees because I was under there. After I finished eating, I was resting. And I heard this voice telling me, my eyes were open. I couldn't move my hands. I couldn't move my legs. I heard this voice telling me that don't dare go to pray for this woman. She is our property. Don't dare go there. Don't try it. It was like a vision. As soon as he got out of sight, I stood up and I told my mother, for the fact that I have been challenged, I will go there. And I went. 
I prayed with her. Why, my, why did I tell you this story? The devil tries to challenge us when we go out to preach, when we go out to take lost souls, those who have been bound in chains. Anytime you go to set the captives free, the devil wants to challenge your authority. Who gave you this right to preach? Unfortunately, there is a crackdown on preaching today, especially preaching on the street. A lot of people have been arrested for mentioning the name of Jesus and telling people to repent. This is the end time we shouldn't be so surprised about it. Again, let's look at the next one, number five, the authority to heal all manner of diseases. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They will lay hands on the sick. Sometimes when you are sick, lay hands on yourself. Pray for yourself first. Before you take medication, always pray for yourself. Don't just be in a hurry to go and take medication, to go for medical checkup. A lot of these problems are caused by demonic infestation, by demonic, uh, demonic entities. Some of them are projections from the kingdoms of darkness. And even if you take medication, it will have little or no effect in your life. So we have to make sure that we pray. Sometimes you go out to preach, even among us who are brethren, sometimes you see your fellow believer sick. Lay hands on them. Pray. Don't say God won't answer your prayer. Don't say it's only a man of God, a powerful man of God, that God answers your prayer. No. It's not scriptural. God answers the prayer of every believer. Have faith and cry to him. He hears, command disease to go, and they will go. Command sicknesses to pack their loads and go, and they will obey you. Pray with faith. The God we serve is always waiting to see us putting our faith into action. If you don't put your faith into action, then it is not good. Live a true Christian life by exercising your faith at every point in time. Let's look at the next one. Power to raise the dead. We are commanded by God that even when we meet with death, we shouldn't shy away from it. Exercise your faith. Raise the dead. Don't say, oh, this work should be done by my pastor. I don't have faith. No, you don't need to be a pastor first before you do this. Matthew chapter 10, verses 1, 7, and 8. And when he had called unto him his, disciples, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Raise the dead. That means even if God has allowed someone to die, remember, even if God doesn't kill the person, if God did not kill someone, nobody dies. If God doesn't call someone home, God doesn't, nobody dies except God allows it. If God doesn't permit it, nobody will die. 
So even if after God has permitted it, maybe the person felt sick in cause of the sickness, the person finally dies. God allows it. God is the giver of life and is the only one who can take life. Even in that situation, the Lord says, raise the dead. Even if I have allowed it, whatsoever thing you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever thing you lose on earth is losing heaven. So even if I allow it, you have some level of authority to raise the dead. Praise God. Raise the dead. Exercise your faith. After this message, please live a true Christian life. Raise the dead. If you have faith enough to go to the mortuary, do it. Raise the dead. Then number seven, authority to set the captives free. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to say that liberty, then that are bruised. And in John chapter 20, verse 21, it says, Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as a father has sent me, even so I send you. Jesus Christ was sent to deliver the captives. And as, the, as God sent him, so he sends us. To go and set the captives free. He wants you to go out there and set the captives free. There are people who are smoking all types of things. There are people who are taking all sorts of illicit substances. You are to go there to proclaim the light of Christ to them and set them free. And by the grace of God, they will receive their deliverance when you go out there to do so. How many of us are concerned about the assignment that the Lord has given to us? Then listen to this one. The authority to partake in God's government. Next week, we're going to talk much about this. The authority to partake in God's government. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. And if children then hears. Yes of God and joint. Yes with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may also. That we may be also glorified together. Now look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Do you know what it means to reign? A prince has the power to reign. A king has the power to reign. We are co-heirs with Christ. And we shall be glorified together with him. We are co heirs of the kingdom. When he is glorified, we will be glorified with him. When he comes to reign, we shall join him to reign. We partake in the government of God. We are going to look at this extensively, deeply next week. We are part of his kingdom. We are part of God's government. How many of us are living in ignorance? How many of us are aware 
that God is counting on us. There are things that will go wrong if he finds no man in a generation, if he finds nobody in your environment, there are things that will go wrong. God is always looking for someone. Before we pray, I want us to look at this Bible passage, Psalm 82, 1 to 8. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Listen. This is a psalm about judges. And it applies to you and I today. You have the power to deliver the oppressed. Those who are oppressed by demons. Those who are oppressed by the powers of darkness. Those who have been fed with lies. You have the power to go and shine the light of Christ upon their hearts. And convert them. But... The lamentation here is that they know not. Those who are supposed to do this, they don't even know. And because they don't know, the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, men, like ordinary men, like mortal men, and fall Like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all things. They know not. A lot of us don't understand. The foundation of the earth are out of course. In verse 5. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Because those who are supposed to stand and exercise dominion, they know not. Neither will they understand because they are walking in darkness. Some of us don't understand the authority we have in Christ. That is why we are we shiver when we meet with some, some kind of situations. I tell people, there are things that God will never come to do for you as a believer. No matter how much he loves you, there are things he will never do for you. For instance, I tell them, if you, if there are mosquitoes in a room and they are biting you, stopping you from sleeping, God will never send his angels from heaven to come and kill the mosquitoes for you. Because he has given you the wisdom, he has given you the enablement, He has given you everything you need for life and godliness. He has given you, you, these are things you have power over. You have dominion over them. So he's not going to come and begin to meddle with the affairs, little, little affairs. I tell some people sometimes, I said, we shouldn't be praying about everything. There are things we shouldn't pray about. Sometimes I even jokingly said, stop disturbing God because of these petty things. Someone even got offended with me when I said, We shouldn't be disturbing God with all these little, little things. And the person said, although the person made a lot of sense, the person said, I I think God is a loving father. And if we ask him questions like this, I don't think he will say we are disturbing him. (laughs) That makes sense. But the truth is that Many of us, um, we don't want to be accountable for anything. We want to push all the responsibilities to God. Even for our own failure, we blame God for not helping us, for failing to do the little things we're supposed to do. But the Lord is saying that the foundations of the earth are out of course because those who are supposed to stand and exercise their authority. They are walking in darkness. They know not. 
And because you do not know, you are going to, instead of you to die honorably, you will die like men, men, ordinary men, like mortal men. Because you do not know the authority you have. Are you in Christ? Are you following the teachings of Jesus Christ? Are you exercising the authority? He has put so much in our hands and he has also endowed us equally. So that we can be able to function. When we leave this world, we will give account of how we use the talent that the Lord has given to us. And many of us are using the authority he has given to us. Are you walking in darkness or you are in Christ? Are you exercising the authority that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us? Are you among those who are hiding in the church or you are among those who are in the church? for cleansing and for service with the hope of eternal life. Thank you for watching this message. I want you to take your time, go through the scriptures, pray about this message and ask the Lord God Almighty to help you to understand it deeply, the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word you have spoken to us. We ask that your power and your spirit will expand on these words. Even as we meditate on these words in our lives, wake us up, cause the wind of revival to blow into our lives. And may we never remain the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. Cover our bodies, our spirits, and our souls with the blood of Jesus. Father, bless us, many who have been supporting our ministries, those who have been supporting us in one way or the other, giving to our charity organization. May the Lord God Almighty bless you, cause his face to shine upon you, take away every kind of trouble, every disease, every faithlessness out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let every dryness give way in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, protect these ones. May they never give up in any way. May the Lord God Almighty protect you, see you through. May he be well with you. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please kindly share this message. If you have not subscribed, subscribe to our channels. And don't forget to invite someone to join us to hear the word of truth in this ministry. God bless you.